Here's what we'll be making today. Some recycled CDs turned into beautiful tiles. And I hope you guys enjoy. I'm only voiceovering and I'm not speeding through. Only this first uh, 16 seconds of the video. The rest is real time. I just needed this clip in. And the end of this video, you'll see a all of the tiles. So be prepared, and I mess up quite a few times. Be prepared for that too. And if you don't like to long vo video tutorials, uh, you might not like this one. I'll catch you guys later. Bye bye. Hi everybody. How's everybody doing today? I have a project that has been done by Pink Poodle Crafter, and she shared with me what she did. And now that was a big mistake because I can't stop making them. So I'm going to share with you guys. And by the way, those are my little mermaid additions that I've been working on. Mm. I'm going to share with you guys, just to give you guys something to look at, how to make these tiles. Now, I don't know if I mentioned, but they're tiles and Pink Poodle Crafter shared with me a video she did a long while ago. I'll link her, her video down below of these tiles. They're freaking cool. So it seems like she got happy mail and somebody sent her the tiles. She asked that person. That person linked her to a video and then Pink Poodle Crafter did hers told me about it, told her she made a big mistake telling me about it because now I'll, I've made hundreds, hundreds, literally hundreds. So what you're going to need is some duct tape or clear packing tape. I only have this 99 cent uh, tape. You're going to need yourself a CD, a ruler, and um, special scissors, I guess. They are special scissors. They cut. Mine cuts pennies. And I'm looking for them right now and I just don't see them. Hmm. Okay. I'll find them and then come back. But, but meanwhile, we can start. So what you do is you grab your packing tape or your duct tape and from you can use any CDs some are harder than others these that are the house made ones the ones that you make your own copies are much easier so you grab yourself a piece of tape okay and give me a second I have to bring it towards me to cut a piece what you do is you just oh before you continue make yourself oh, I have scissors right here scratch the CD just to give yourself a starting point that's a terrible feeling for me to scratch the CD Ugh, I hate it lay your tape down and it should pull this up just because it didn't pull it up. Let me see if I have another CD. It's not pulling it up. Now this is just happening because I'm recording because I did it just fine. Hmm. Hmm. 
not working. I have no clue why it's not working. Okay, I went in and I grabbed another CD, and hopefully this one will work. Yes, this one will work. All right. So you put the same thing, place your tape and then pull it off. There we go, do you see that? Okay, you do that all the way around. And I went and I grabbed some packing tape to see if that works. I haven't tried it with packing tape yet but it has been used. Cool, it does work. Okay. Okay, I like the duct tape better than I did the packing tape. And some CDs you'll get the stuff off but not completely and it'll leave like some holographics or holographs, hollow something, whatever that word is, behind and that's okay. You can still continue and just leave it there because once we do our second step, whatever is left over the film, because some CDs on the film it won't come off. So whatever film is left behind, it's, it's perfectly fine because we're going to use the oven and it actually looks really nice, really nice, and then we're good. Okay, I freeformed the ones that you see after this video, um, you'll, or you've seen before and after this video. Uh, you can freeform them, basically, oh I forgot my scissors again, okay, I'll be right back. Okay, I can't find my scissors anywhere, and nobody's returning my phone calls as far as the, the kids, teenage kids, to tell me if they grabbed them off my desk or not. So, I don't want to not do the video, so we're just going to use my regular junky scissors that get stuck anyways because there's gooey stuff there. I, to I totally know how to remove it, but I'm just being lazy. So we're just going to use these scissors and the reason you're going to want to measure this out is because you're going to need, when we're ready, you're going to need two tiles. You're going to paint one towel, you're going to lay the other towel on top and then we're going to throw them in the oven. I am looking for some kind of marking pin. Maybe thicker. So go ahead and think of your tiles and what size you would like your tiles. For the sake of the video, I'm going to do big ones. I do have many, many of the 
small ones, so these big ones will be fine. Okay. Might as well mark this one on top so that we end up with whoop, equal size tiles. They don't have to be exact, but close enough. Okay. And just cut. Be very careful. Okay, so I like to give them a do my tiles like this. I keep the middles just because I'm not sure yet if I want to toss them, if I want to work on something else or turn it into something else. I haven't played with that yet. I'm going to cut this one out also. We done? Just going to go in half. I'm just going to do all of them right in half. Just for the sake of the video. Okay. Let's take off the rounded edge. Let's just work on this one. Yeah. Let's move all these aside. Cut it in half. And then get the other pair, the other part that matches it. And basically, what we're going to do is take off the rounded edge. And now we have two tiles, right? So that's basically what you're trying to do is get tiles, squares that can go on top of each other very easily. Okay, these I'll put aside and do on my own, then choose paints, three paints, three colors look nice, you can do it off a palette, you can do it however you like. I'm just free-forming right now. You can sandwich it now and see what happens. That's perfectly fine. Let's do these together.
and these are just acrylic paints. I'm doing it really messy and, and I'm okay with that. You can lay all your paints down in a, um, in a palette if you like. Work from there. Since I already did a hundred of them, like literally you guys seen the video, I did over a hundred of them. I'm okay with being messy and free form with them. There was somewhere I just scribbled like that. And then you encase it. Okay, so you leave them to dry as many as you like. Once they're dried, you throw them into the oven. But before putting them in the oven, what you want to do, what you would need to do is lay out some kind of baking sheet, tin foil or um, wax paper, I'm assuming even one of your craft mats or baking mats lay all your tiles down now in our ovens we have those racks right don't put your tile on the part of the rack that has the metal don't go like this instead let's pretend this is the rack I can't take you to the kitchen right now pretend this is the rack and then you have your two metal parts on your rack place it right in the middle like that don't overlap it because you're going to end up with a wonky tile unless you want a wonky tile lay them all in but, but before you lay them all in or you could lay them all in and put them on the counter but what you need to do is preheat your oven to boil broil sorry broil once you see your oven turn orange, you know the bottom turns nice and orange, throw in your rack with your tiles and stay there. Stay in the kitchen, do not walk away. And put your little oven light on and keep checking them. And what you're going to see is the edges of your tile melts to the bottom. And when you see that, pull them out. Don't be fr afraid to pull them out too early because if you pull it out too early, let them cool off and you realize they might need a little bit more, do it again. My first try, I had to do it four times because I kept pulling them out too early. Let me put this here so you guys have something to look at. I kept pulling them out too early and having to put them back in and out. Once you're done, you'll end up with the tiles that I have and Angela Rosetti that sent me Happy Mail, Happy Mail sent me a piece of fabric. That day, I made a journal out of it. And what I ended up doing is making myself a button out of one of the tiles. And here it is. What I did was I had a candle, got one of these, burnt this over the candle, heated it up, made myself the two holes turned into a button. You can make bracelets, earrings, and so on and so on. So have fun. The main part that I didn't show you, which is not the main part, but it's very simple, is the oven part. They're working in the kitchen right now, so I can't go into the kitchen and share with you guys. But you see the end result, and in the next video, maybe we'll be playing with them and turning them into jewelry or something else. Share with your friends. Have fun, have a blast, have a party, have a girls gathering, get together and make a bunch of towels. And uh, I'll leave you the link to Pink Poodle Crafter. 
and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye bye. Okay, this is um, the end of the video. This is a clip that I ended up adding to the video. Um, so here we're just removing the tiles from the tin foil after they've been put in the oven a good four times. I'm not even sure if it was four or seven times. Uh, they're gorgeous and all I used here was acrylic paints. Mixed lots of different acrylic paints. Uh, the, the tutorial you guys just seen, I basically just squirted straight out of the bottle. But when I did these tiles here, what I did was I picked about eight, nine colors, put them in a palette, and just played. And I let colors mix, I let colors drip. Um, I just played and played and played. I kind of got tired of taking the tiles off one by one, so I just shredded up my tin foil and started pulling tiles out um, little by little, one by one. Some of the tiles got the tin foil stuck in them or stuck on the back. Um, it was easily removable. I didn't take it completely off here on the video just because of the just because I didn't want you guys to see um, the time that it took. On this one I think I did just to share with you guys that it comes off fine. And even if you wanted to leave some of the tin foil on the back it's perfectly fine. There's no harm to the tile really makes no difference. Now remember I explained to you guys in the other vi in the other clip that these were free formed. The ones that you guys seen I didn't free form, but the possibilities are endless. You can just cut your tiles however and lay another tile on top even if it matches or doesn't match. The difference will be that they will not be a complete shiny part but they're still very pretty and you can cut around. Hopefully my camera zooms in. Okay so do you see that top one, the bottom one, the other bottom one? You see the shiny part right? I put a tile on that one that totally didn't match but it's okay. If you like that look great and if you don't like that look well just grab your scissors and cut around the edges and you'll get a perfectly shiny tile me personally I like that look I like matte the matte look in the back and then the glossy on top and throughout this video I'm not too sure if I'm gonna continue talking we'll see how much I've got to say today <laughs> I did have a lot a lot of fun making these they are very addicting. If you guys have tried my boho be gypsy beads, well, these are as addicting. I did these for about, mm -hmm. oh, I want to say almost two weeks of playing and painting. The painting took one day. What took the most was the cutting and the imp me being so very impatient with the oven and pulling them out prematurely and having to put them back in. That's what took me the longest. But yes, as I mentioned, this will this last part of the video is going to be really long. You don't have to watch it. I'm not going to show you any tutorial after, during this clip. All I'm doing is removing tiles and throwing them onto the white paper that you see. Just in case for those who would like to see each and every tile that I created. Now, do you see the silver in some of those? I know that you see the reflecting light from up, up above. Hang on, I gotta, I gotta yawn. Excuse me. But some of those tiles there, <clears throat> either it be the bottom or the top, still had the film of the CDs. There you go, there's one. That one's really pretty. You see it crackled. Some of the CDs, the film, the silver film, the top part would come off but it would still leave a residue of silver. Now Pink Poodle and I did not know how that was going to come out but I refused to throw them away and I just wanted to completely play around and experiment. Um, hers 
mm, she didn't have that problem. She and it's really ended up not being a problem, but she didn't have that occur or happen to her. So it happened to me, and some of my CDs, just the silver stuff, would not come off. And I still went ahead and painted on top of them and sandwiched them perfectly fine. I actually prefer it with the silver stuff. The clear ones are gorgeous also, but the ones with the silver are just extra, and I really like them. So yes, we are done with the tutorial, and I'm repeating this again just in case you didn't hear it, because I do get those comments of, oh, you talk too much. Oh, there was no reason for you to show all of these, and blah, 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 so... And then I get those wonderful comments that are, I love spending time with you. I feel like you're in my craft room and you're crafting with me while, while I create. And it feels like I have a good friend in the room. Uh, those are beautiful comments and so many other beautiful comments. But I just have to throw it in there again. This is now just show and tell. Oh, there's Kitty. Hello, Kitty. For those of you who have asked for honey and how's honey doing, well, she's a big girl now. She's right there. <laughs> Once in a while she jumps up here on my desk to see what I'm doing. She can't get into anything terrible, so I let her jump up there. And really, really what she's doing is just letting me know that she is hungry. And um, she's a very patient cat. She's always bringing me gifts. She brings me lizards, mice. All the sad ones are the birds. They're all sad. But those are her little gifts. Actually, they don't even make it in the house anymore. She used to bring them to my bed. Uh, the dogs stop her from bringing them totally into the house. Yeah, so it, it's a process of pulling them off. But do you guys see? Some of them got stuck. Some triangles and squares got stuck. They look pretty cool. They really look pretty cool. Like I said, in the next video, maybe we'll be putting some stuff together, m turning these into things. I'm not too sure. I keep yawning because I lowered my intake of coffee. I'm doing half a cup. I'm drinking so much water that I can't stand to drink any more liquids throughout the day. So, on top of all the water, to have a cup of coffee is like a little too much fluids in my system. Look how pretty they are. I think there's one up there that didn't end up getting a top coat, a second layer. It's perfectly fine. I could either choose to re-throw it back into the oven or just leave it as is or coat it myself with some kind of glaze. They were lots of fun. I'm, I'm thinking, well, Pink Poodle Crafter said she didn't have luck with putting glitter and fibers in it, in hers. I had, didn't try it. I'm not sure. I guess I will try it in the future. I'll share with you guys how those come out. I'm not too sure when I'll do that, but yes, I want to put glitter and fibers and paper into mine and see what happens. Uh, it's very simple to get a hole into these. You just heat up a needle and poke a hole straight in. I've already done it. And they're easy to trim. And if you have the patience, you can turn them in probably into shapes. Um, I don't think I have the patience for that. Well, that may not be true. I think I'm lying. Probably would have the patience for it. 
it's just not something I'm going to be doing anytime soon but as far as putting glitter and fiber into them yes this is a project that would be pretty cool to do with a bunch of people and then trade the tiles make things out of them place them on top of boxes make some wind chimes bracelets necklaces earrings rings place them on a canvas so many things we could do with them and how long do we have still we still have five minutes look how pretty that one is orange green and red so pretty yeah I already have put them away and I have them in a little bin I filled up a bin sure did and I'm sending some out with my happy mail for the trade with the beads I have the bead trading with pink poodle crafter and Angela Rossetti so you you ladies will be getting some and like I mentioned I'll be linking pink poodle crafter down below the video she did on the tiles in this video here and I think I'm going to say goodbye now you guys have fun I hope I inspired you guys please share my most popular place to be shared on is Pinterest I really really do appreciate it when you guys share anywhere but Pinterest brings the most traffic to my channel once I get these subscribers um, and they watch my videos the comments that I get from the new subscribers the old subscribers are so encouraging to me so so encouraging to me you know out of a hundred I may get one that's not the best but you know what that's okay it's part of the game and I do monetize my videos so I do make a little bit of money I have not yet received a YouTube check yet um, haven't received the threshold yet but you know what that's okay I do this to inspire yes I would like some money we all like money don't we so the more views I get it's not about the subscribers it's actually about views the more views I get the more you guys share and people view even if they subscribe or don't subscribe it's the view that counts now let's say I get a hundred views that's barely a penny right there um, let's see uh, 44,000 views is about $19 so it's not much and YouTube will not send checks out unless you're monetized and unless you reach your $200 threshold just for you know little information is you should us youtubers that monetize we share 50 percent of our ad revenue with YouTube so we have to make two hundred dollars in ad revenue in order to get our fifty percent which will be a hundred dollars so that's the way this works just in case you didn't know it takes a long while for me personally to hit two hundred dollars I haven't done it yet I'm almost there I think I have oh about fifty dollars more to go in order for me to reach those two hundred and that's that I've been at this for five months now um, with just no contract between just me and YouTube I've been at it for five months so I'm almost at my two hundred dollars I actually think that's pretty good um, when I first started two years ago I was with a partner and I was sharing more than fifty percent I was sh sharing eighty percent so I really wasn't making much back then either that contract has finished and now I'm on my own and I own my own channel the only thing is that I do have to pay 50% to YouTube so yes please share the more views the better for me the more I accumulate on views and am able to buy myself some craft supplies or pay some bills or get the cats or the cat and the dogs or the kids things that they need and 
Thank you so very much. I don't know why I went off in that rant. Maybe because not many will watch till the end. <laughs> okay, guys. Talk to you guys later. Hugs to all of you guys. From me to you. Coming from Los Angeles, California. Bye-bye.